Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Thank you very much for, for coming along. We'll, uh, we'll get started now. Um, this is the first time, as you are aware, that we've held these curriculum information evenings, but um, I hope you'll find it useful. Um, I think the title should be self-explanatory. It's, it's our opportunity to share with you information about the curriculum that your child will be studying in year 11. Um, I'll go through in a moment the um, inputs that we're going to have and the members of staff who are going to speak to you. Uh, but also a crucial element of it is to give you some information and advice um, how you as parents and carers can support your child through what's obviously going to be a really uh, important and challenging year. Um, I think what I, what I want to also say at the beginning is that uh, we're really pleased with the way that Year 11 have um, come back and started this academic year on the whole. Uh, things are going really well. They've come back with a, a very good attitude, uh, and obviously we uh, we want that to continue. So, in terms of the people who'll be presenting to you uh, this evening, they're all just um, sitting at the front. So, uh, Mr. Halls, our deputy head teacher in charge of quality of education, will be going through with you some of the key dates uh, for Year Eleven. Uh, Mrs. Black, assistant head, will be talking about learning at the Radcliffe School, so some of the uh, principles that underline all our classroom practice and also what home learning will look like. Uh, Miss Parkinson, one of our uh, aspiring assistant head teachers, will talk to you about post-16 post guidance um, because obviously uh, next year uh, your child will be leaving the school and then you know they'll have to make a decision about what education and training looks like for them. And then we've got inputs from our respective heads of faculty from English, Math and Science. So that's uh, Miss Kalik, uh, Miss Aidan Waller and Mr Watson. Obviously, your child will be studying other subjects on their timetable, um, but we're just focusing tonight on those core subjects that, uh, that everyone studies during Year 11. So before I hand to Mr Halls, um, just to also emphasise that we will be giving you a lot of information this evening, but don't worry, don't feel that you need to write all of it down or make notes uh, as we're going through. All this information, all the slides and the audio commentary as well will be on the website from tomorrow. So if there's anything that you want to look back at and just to clarify the details of anything, just go onto the school website and there'll be a link to this presentation from tomorrow. Um, and finally from me, before I hand to Mr Halls, um, I just want to go through with you the GCSE outcomes that our previous Year 11 achieved. So they finished their Year 11 studies uh, this summer and they're the, uh, the outcomes that they got. So I'm not going to read through all of those scores, all of those, um, those records, but just to really emphasise that, you know, we were really happy with those, uh, those outcomes that that cohort got, those 300 students. It was some fantastic individual performances uh, and collectively those, those outcomes are amongst the best that the school's ever achieved uh, and they compare really favourably with national outcomes and also local outcomes so when we look at um, the results achieved by other schools in Oldham so I just think it's testament to the uh, really good standards of education that we provide at the school and obviously our aspiration is that we continue that with your children as they make their journey through year 11. There's one other thing I have uh, nearly forgotten to do, but it's really important, and that's just to introduce you to some members of the pastoral team um, who'll be looking after your child through year 11. Uh, we have had a change of year manager, so just invite Mr. Mia uh, to take a step forward. Uh, so Mr. Mia um, is now the year manager for your child's year group, taking over from Miss Imerson. Mr. Mia was previously an assistant year manager, so he's very familiar with the school systems and the students as well. And also just to introduce Mr. Havercroft, who is the lead PLG, the lead personal learning guide, who again uh, will greet your child every morning and supports uh, their pastoral um, and their pastoral welfare. Right, okay, I think on that point, I'll hand over to Mr. Halls. Okay. So it's so a welcome from me um, this afternoon. Um, I'm just going to, uh, my name is Halls, uh, I have oversight of the curriculum and uh, I'm just going to take you through uh, a few details uh, to, to do with that and a few key dates, as Mr. Craig said. So the content 
of the curriculum at Key Stage 4 is almost entirely dictated by the GCSE specifications. And I'm not going to dwell too much on that because we have the heads of subject uh, from English, Maths and Science who will uh, take you through the content of the curriculum in uh, that core, the core subjects of English, Maths and Science. Um, however, um, it would also be good to hear from um, the other heads of subject, excuse me, just find the slide for a second. Um, however, uh, we want to make a efficient use of the time this evening. Um, and so keeping the, uh, the, the presentation today to, uh, to a reasonable length, um, we're not, you're not able to hear from the heads of the other subjects, including the option subjects. So if you uh, would like to see what the students study, um, please do go to our website. And there's a, a button at the top on the, on the first page, which is curriculum, and you should find all the information that you need there. If you have further questions, please feel free to contact the school, either through the admin email address um, or to phone in directly to the office and contact the relevant head of subject. And I'm sure they'll be able to get back to you uh, and answer the questions. Of course, you can approach the, uh, your child's subject teacher. Um, so the key dates this year uh, for your diary, um, firstly, and possibly most importantly, is Thursday, uh, the 10th of November. Um, that will be the year 11 parents evening. That's fairly early on in the year, the purpose um, for you to be able to ask some questions and support your child through this most important phase of their education to date. Uh, the PPEs or the P uh, pre-public exams are in two blocks. We, uh, we were in a position where we needed to do that last year. We found it's very successful and allows the students to prioritize uh, their preparation for those. Um, and uh, we, we believe that gives a greater benefit both to the students and allows uh, good feedback to be given um, in, in order for the students to prepare effectively for the final exams, um, which, which come later. Um, then also there's the year 11 final push evening, which is another opportunity for you to uh, find out about um, how your young person, your child is, is getting on um, and to what they can do in the final closing bits of the, the year before the exam starts uh, in order to be fully prepared and do their very best. Uh, last of all there, the, uh, the exam is not long, long away actually really, is it? Uh, the 15th of May, 2023. The GCSE exams begin and uh, we will, uh, as soon as we are able to, be sending out a timetable for the exams, which should shortly be finalised. As far as reporting is concerned, they're the key dates, well they're not dates, but rough approximate times that you should uh, receive uh, an attitude to learning grade, details on attendance and also currently working towards grades will be in mid-October, early February and mid-April. Okay, I'm gonna hand over to Mrs. Black. Okay, good evening everybody. Thank you very much for coming. It's lovely to be able to speak to you. So I'm gonna spend about the next five minutes just talking to you a little bit about your child's learning in school and at home. So obviously, you know, being in year 11, this isn't new information, but it is really, really important. So I'm not going to read through all of this and obviously you'll have access to the presentation after the evening, but it goes without saying that we're really passionate about learning and teaching and it's at the heart of everything we do. So it's at the core of the decisions we make around what your child experiences at school and at home from us. So I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about lesson structure and this is the structure of every lesson and we share this with staff and we share it with students and we're very clear about our expectations. So I'll just put them all up. There's just 10 things that we expect but why it's important for you is actually I think to know what we're offering your child and to know that we really value consistency because as your child moves from subject to subject they should be expecting the same things of their teachers. So in order to deliver an ambitious curriculum, it's carefully planned and it's adapted for the groups. Uh, your students, or your, sorry, our students, your children will be sat in seating plans because we want to reduce disruption and maximise learning. So they should expect that. Um, we organise uniform and things before they come in because we don't want anything to take time away from learning. And there'll be quite a standard approach to the start of lessons. And again, that's important because we need to make sure that the maximum amount of time and energy 
goes into your child's learning rather than dealing with other things. Um, we do expect students to be equipped and it is really important that they take ownership of that. So they should arrive to their lessons with the basic equipment, with the pens they need and a calculator uh, and their maths equipment. Um, as a year group team, if anybody's had a bit of a disaster, if there's a problem, we are there in the morning, every morning to check uniform and to help with equipment, but it is your child's responsibility. So this next slide is up in every classroom as a poster, and it's still in the sort of language that we would share with the students. But again, as parents and carers, this is really important because if you speak to your children or you look in their books, this gives you a bit of an indication about what you might see and also why it's there, which I think is important. So if we just start at the top, um, we do expect all of our students to take pride in their learning um, and be proud in their work. You know, so work you see coming home from school should be well presented, books should be well looked after. I hope when you open books and look in them, there'll be lots of work from a variety of different subjects and you should see lots of red pen. And actually what the red pen tells you is that your child has taken feedback opportunities in lessons and um, corrected, marked their work. That's really, really important that you see that because feedback at the time immediately has the most impact on learning. You should see evidence of teacher feedback, although we're, we're a school with a policy that's about feedback, not marking. So you shouldn't expect to see loads of green pen in the books, but you should expect to see whole class feedback. And also, if I look across at the next box, blue pen, which indicates that your child's acted on some teacher feedback, and that's really important. Um, literacy is a key priority for us, so you should see evidence that um, there's either activities around literacy and developing vocabulary in each subject, or the specific feedback on literacy and perhaps how to write in certain subjects. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the last part of this slide, which is about learning at home. And although it's really important that you know exactly what happens at school, I think it's really important that we take the time to talk about this, because obviously this falls much more with you at home than us. Um, so this is the information that's in our policy. So it's shared with staff. It's on the website. Um, a letter went out to parents at the end of last week with some information about this. So this shouldn't be new. Um, but it's just to give you a little bit of information. So all home learning from the start of next week will be set on uh, Satchel 1, which is Show My Homework. Now, the students have access to this um, in their lessons. You know, we've uh, built in some time for them to look at it. I've written out to parents so that digitally will have arrived and there's some information on the website. But what you should expect from next week is that in a variety of subjects, and you can see the sort of details there, which I'll go through, you should be receiving learning that's out of class. So for core subjects, which is the subjects that are here today, English, maths and science, uh, we're talking about key stage four, it's at least one opportunity per week. It might be more than that, but it should be one at least every week. Other subjects uh, should make sure that for key stage four, there's at least two per half term. I would expect it to be more than that for most of those other subjects. It will always be set on Satchel One, which is a really easy platform to use. There's a free app that you can download as a parent. I encourage you to do that. Uh, there's some information has been sent out to parents about a pin to access that. And it means you get push notifications when something's set, if it's done or not done. So you can really support your child with that. Uh, students will always be given seven days. So it doesn't matter if they have quite a busy day with work being set. They'll always have seven days to complete it. Um, and it's really important that we as a school stick to that and that you're aware of that. So we've said this to students and there's a presentation gone out to them this week that I've recorded for them. But we expect them from next uh, next week, it'll be Tuesday next week, to check it every day. Um, complete it on time. Doesn't always have to be the same day it's set, but complete it on time and build in good routines. Ask their teachers if they need help. They can email or they can see us in school. That's why we gave seven days for each piece. And keep up to date, try not to leave them to the last day. And all we can ask is, as with anything, that they try the best with that work. Now, as parents and carers, what can you do? I've mentioned the app already. I really encourage you to get that. You will get notifications and information about your child's home learning. But please just encourage them to develop those routines. You know, find them a space to work each day and a time to work each day. And just have those conversations about the work that's been set. Because actually, the time that's spent on the out-of-class learning will add up and will make a difference. And lastly, for me, uh, we learned an awful lot when we were all trying to learn at home. Um, and we know that there are some significant barriers when you're not in school learning. 
Um, our provision is device neutral, so we'll be really careful about what we set for our students. If it's paper-based, they'll be given the paper. They won't be expected to print anything off at home, but they will be expected to access Satchel One and complete the work. It might be online work on things like GCSE Pod uh, or other websites, or it might be other documents. They've had some extra information about that, but if you haven't got a suitable device at home, on our website, there's a form you can fill in. If you just put laptops or laptop loan scheme in the search bar, it'll take you to a form and I encourage you to fill that in. It's not means tested, it's needs tested. So if a student needs a device, we are in a position to be able to loan them a device to be able to do their home learning on. And it's so important for year 11 that they don't miss out on those opportunities. Um, I'm going to hand over now. So thank you very much. Okay, good evening. My name is Miss Parkinson and I'm the careers lead at the Radcliffe School. I do believe at the Radcliffe School we're passionate about linking the curriculum to careers and making sure that all of our young people can thrive beyond the gates of the Radcliffe School. It's about empowering our young people to be able to make informed decisions so when they get to that stage at post 16, they can go on beyond the Radcliffe School and thrive with whatever option that they may choose. And with that in mind, we adhere to the eight Gatsby benchmarks. So we link our curriculum with, to careers. We ensure that we use the labour market information to make informed decisions. We make sure we address every student's needs within our school and provide opportunities for all young people. Encounters with employers and employees and experience of the workplace. And so most recently, your year group has just taken part in the World of Work Week. Encounters with further and higher education. And we provide one-to-one -one personal guidance with our level six careers advisor. Throughout the whole of your career journey here at the Radcliffe School, year seven to year 11, your child has experienced a breadth of experiences and opportunities, whether that be Oldham College Taser Days, whether it be Shakespeare for Schools, NHS competitions, Manchester College, National Careers Weeks, T-Levels and Apprenticeship Weeks. They've had opportunities of various different careers activities. And we pride ourselves on making sure we provide provision for those activities because it's about making learning contextual and relevant. It's about putting them in the real world. So now it's about their next steps. At year 11, it's over to your child to make that decision about where they see their future career. And with that in mind, we need your support. And it's important that we work in triangulation over the next 12 months. So that your child's next steps, is what they will be required to apply for college. There are five routes that are available for them. T-levels, A-levels, BTEC, apprenticeships and foundation learning. I must stress now that all of those routes are of equal value. And it's about what your child's interested in and what courses they offer. I have provided a handout for you to take away on more information on those routes. But with this in mind, the next steps that we advise for your child to do is firstly research the post-16 options that are available to them and find out what they're actually interested in. So make sure that they attend the Personal Development Hub, which is now based on Level 3 on the Science Corridor. And within that hub, it's open every lunch and break time to all young people. And there are college prospectuses and our one-to-one -one Level 6 careers advisor available. Be present in your personal development lessons this academic year. It's absolutely crucial. These next, this academic year and this half term in particular is focused specifically on post-16 transition. So we have mock interview practices. We have post-16 providers coming into lessons. So it's absolutely essential that attendance is 100% over this next half term. Attend your one-to-one -one careers meeting with our level six careers advisor. So I know some people already in this room today have been, have been in the personal development hub today for their one-to-one -one meeting. In addition to that though, as a parent and carer, you're also invited to attend that meeting. So again, I know there's some people in this room today who have also attended those meetings to support their child. If you wish to attend, by all means, you can communicate with myself or Rahela, the careers advisor, and we can arrange that for you. And then look at submitting your application for at least two post-16 options. Now we advise at this point that you apply for an academic one and a vocational one. And then should on results day, whatever those results may be, we can make sure we can put you on the right route for your results. So how do you apply? Previous years, it was a paper application, but now it's all online. So if you're not access to ICT at home, again, the Personal Development Hub has computers available for you to drop in at lunch or break time to support your application. In addition to that, we also have drop-ins whereby we'll have the post-16 providers in our hub during lunchtime to support you should you wish to apply for that particular college. You do need to take in the entry requirements for which colleges you are applying for. 
Now, we strive at the Radcliffe School for every young person to embark on a level three qualification. And with that in mind, you need five grade four to nine. So my first point, would, my first piece of advice would be to check your current cats and set out a plan as to how you're going to ensure that you achieve five grade four to nines. Should you not achieve those on results day, then the careers advisors and myself will be available to redirect you on other courses as there are courses at colleges on all levels. How do you choose? Well, the open evenings are essential. It's absolutely important you go and get a feel for them. Uh, would you, do you see yourself learning there? Do you engage with the tutors? Is there enrichment program suitable for you? So before you leave this evening, I will give you a handout of all the open evenings that are available to you over the next coming months. There are some colleges that say to be confirmed, but I have also included the link to the post 16 providers. So you can go onto their website and keep up to date with their open evenings. Look at what subjects you enjoy. What subjects do you excel in? At this point, it's not about what your friends do. And it's also not about what the parents or carers want your child to do. It's about listening to the child, listening to their interests, looking at their grades and making sure that they embark on a, on a route that is suitable for them. So there are many key dates over this next academic year. And the first one is next Thursday, where it's a careers fair in this hall. We will have numerous employers and post-16 providers whereby your child can engage with those, ask questions and find more information about what that career sector involves. In addition to that, we have on Wednesday, the 5th of October and the 6th, uh, sorry, we have Oldham Sixth Form College, lunchtime drop-in in the personal development hub. You don't have to apply for Oldham Sixth Form on that day. You can come and ask questions and find out more information about that college. We have on Wednesday the 12th of October in personal development lessons, we have five different colleges coming in. So we have Zabavian College, Blue Coat, Ask Apprenticeship, Udham Sixth Form and Udham College, who will do a carousel of workshops with our young people. Friday the 14th, Udham Sixth Form drop-in. Wednesday the 19th, again, a carousel of five different post-16 providers to support them making an informed decision. Within their personal development lessons, they've also been given a mock interview lesson. They can then submit that mock interview application form to myself at the Personal Development Hub and they will be allocated a mock interview appointment during Year 11 Parents Evening whereby they will be interviewed by one of our external governors and will give them feedback on their interview technique in preparation for that real interview. Thursday the 10th of November, Year 11 Parents Evening, we invite post-16 providers to this event as well, again for parents to, and carers to engage in conversations with them and they're able to support their child on the next steps. And then Monday the 14th of November is the college application deadline. On all different college websites, it will give you various different deadline dates, but we set an internal deadline date. And the reason for this is because we pride ourselves on supporting every young person. So by the 14th of November, we can track who hasn't applied and who needs additional support. So that's why we have an internal deadline. So if your child says, well, on this website, it says the 9th of December, the Radcliffe School internal deadline is the 14th of November, okay? With that in mind as well, obviously there's numerous students applying for college places. They are restricted and it's important that we get our application forms in first. So our students are at the forefront of potentially getting the position that they want on the course that they want. So how is you as parents and carers can you support us over these next 12 months? First of all, encourage your child to attend the open days. Attend with them if they will let you. Support your child when completing their application form. Read over their personal statement. Direct them to the personal development hub if they need additional support. Have careers conversations with them. Ask them about their subjects. Ask them about what they're interested in. Ensure your child attends school on a regular basis. Attendance over these next, this next academic year is absolutely crucial. Encourage your child to seek out information. Attend Year 11 Parents Evening. Again, that triangulation with the teachers and understanding where your child's currently at is crucial to supporting them on that next step. And if you as a parent or carer does have any questions, myself or Rahela are always available or should you wish to attend the careers meetings, by all means, you can contact us via email or by the telephone number or by the school office. And on this note, I just want to end with this statement. We really continually inspire and motivate our students to raise their aspirations at the Radcliffe School. We want them to fulfill their potential. We guide and support them on their journey towards post and opportunities and beyond. But I believe with your support, we can make sure that our students go on and make a successful transition. So over this next 12 months, let's work in triangulation and let's, let's make sure every young person has a successful transition to post-16. I'm now going to hand you over.
Okay. Um, good afternoon, I'm Miss Kellick, um, Head of English. Um, so I'm here to just um, to speak to you a little bit about the English curriculum um, at Year 11 and what um, your child should expect in Year 11 and how we can support your child to succeed in English, which is a real crucial qualification. So in terms of curriculum coverage, we are, in English, we're, we're focusing on we're two separate subjects. So um, we... We follow the AQA exam board um, and we they, they will get two GCSEs at the end of, of, the, of the year. Um, so that will be English literature and English language. Now, we've covered a lot of the components in year 10, um, but one of the literature components that we haven't covered um, in like just yet is Macbeth, which is what students are currently being taught in lessons. Now, that's probably the most challenging component on the literature GCSE in terms of vocabulary and language, which is why we've left it till year 11, where students have made as much progress as, as, as they can. So that will take around about 10 weeks. So it will go into that second half term. We're then going to follow that by three weeks of language paper one, section A and section B. So that is obviously their English language paper. Now they were introduced to that paper last year and they have been taught it. But our focus will be about trying to ensure that the quality of their responses improves so that we can maximise their marks on each of those questions. Um, half term three will be language paper two and literature paper two. Now, language paper two is um, always something that our students seem to struggle a little bit more with. It's, you know, there's more comparisons. They're looking at two texts rather than just one. So we will dedicate a little bit more time to that. And then finally, um, half term four and half term five, it says final revision and preparation. Now, as much as that sounds like a lot of time, there are 10 components to the English language GCSE and there are six components to the literature um, GCSE. And to put that into perspective, like one of those components is Macbeth. So that isn't very much time at all, um, but it's what we've, we've, we, we do have to work with. Um, so there'll be, be revising each of those components in those final two um, half terms. Now, um, in terms of assessment, we do assess regularly at GCSE. Um, so at the end of each half term, there are assessments that check for understanding of the topics covered. And um, slightly different with Macbeth because um, it takes a little bit more time to teach the content there. Um, in half term two and half term three, they're also going to sit their PPEs. Um, so the first half term, so in December, and um, the dates haven't been confirmed yet, but we will communicate them as soon as they are. And um, they'll be, they'll be um, sitting a language paper one and a literature paper one. So literature paper one will, will focus on Macbeth and a Christmas carol. Um, and then in February, they'll sit their language paper two and literature paper two. Now, those are obviously really important because it gives your child a chance to feel what the, the real exam is, is, is going to be like and make sure that any mistakes that are made are made, made there and we can give them lots of feedback to ensure that they are exam ready when they sit their GCSE. Um, we also um, formative, formatively assess students each and every lesson um, so we can address any gaps in knowledge, um, that we can address any misconceptions and it will inform future learning because your child is struggling with something then, you know, chances are other children in the class are struggling as well. Um, so it is really important that we assess and that we give that feedback and students know where they are and what they, what they can do to improve. Um, in terms of home learning, um, students, as Ms. Black said earlier, they will get in core subjects at least one hour of home learning each week. And home learning in English is designed to develop knowledge of text and exam skills in preparation for the GCSE. And as the year progresses, you probably see that they will move from more like factual recall to um, like ho home learning that develops their higher level thinking and that reflects the kind of questions that they're going to get in those exams. Now, on top of that, what we would always say is that students are revising and we would always encourage students to revise and begin that revision process really early. Um, and some of the things that they can do, a lot, a lot of students said they don't know how to revise in English, um, but complete in time conditions, practice um, questions and exam papers that have been provided by the class teacher. Now, we always say that if students do anything extra, 
Um, we will, as teachers, mark anything extra that they've done and, and give them feedback on that. So they can either email us um, that, that work or they can um, give it to us in class. Um, utilise the booklets that we've developed as faculty that develop key skills and knowledge of the text and learn the quotations for literature. It's a real, um, a real concern if students don't learn those quotations because it means that they can't access a lot of the literature paper. So they can't do the analysis, which, is, which, which accounts for a huge proportion of their marks. Um, so in terms of how you can support, which is obviously why you're all here today, is, is just checking your child is completing homework each week. Um, encourage your child to begin studying um, earlier. We know that you know if, if, if students leave it to the last minute in those final weeks of their GCSE, it can be very overwhelming. And to avoid that happening, they need to start chipping away at that revision um, now. Um, you can buy the CGP guides that are available on parent pay. They are cheaper to buy on parent pay than they are in other, um, like in bookshops and, th and places like that. Um, and also contact myself or your class, um, child's class teacher if you have any concerns or you want further guidance on how to support them. Um, I think that's everything. If you've got any questions, I'll be around at the end. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to stand uh, just a little bit nearer, if you don't mind. Uh, my name is Mrs. Aidan Waller. Um, so I'd like to start by um, just, okay, hopefully. Um, so Key Stage 4 is a two-year course. We started in year 10. We have done a lot of the work already, okay? What time we have left, a third of a year, is really spent on finishing off the topics that we haven't yet managed to cover. What you will notice when you look at, at the screen, that uh, unlike some other subjects, maths is tiered. There's a foundation tier and a higher tier. And depending on which group your child is in, they're either completing the foundation scheme of learning or the higher scheme of learning. We follow the Edexcel um, Pearson scheme, and Edexcel is our exam board. So you'll notice that when we come towards the end of half term two, we have nearly completed all of the work. So what are we doing for the rest of the time? We are preparing, firstly, for the PPEs. In maths, there are three papers to sit. The first paper is a non-calculator paper. The other two papers are calculator topics. Each paper is one and a half hours. So that's quite an intensive amount of time. We would really ask uh, you know, for your support in making sure that you know, students are revising. Okay, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But to help them revise, we look at the data that we've collected from the PPE, and we look at the topics that students have done well on. We revisit topics that we feel need improvement. Okay, and we will give your child plenty of information about topics that they need to improve individually. As class teachers, we will recover uh, topics uh, to help a personalized learning, but also to help all students. We do a lot of exam practice as well, okay? Because sitting one and a half hour exams requires us to have pace, okay, and focus. So that's what will be happening uh, throughout the year. Okay. So I've already mentioned uh, a little bit about exams already. But in maths, every two weeks, we do a recall sheet. The purpose of that is to make sure that facts that we are uh, wanting to secure, you know, we have managed to get across. We give feedback on the very short assessments, okay? They are very much fluency-based, checking understanding. We give feedback to the students. So again, it's an opportunity for the students to engage with us and improve their understanding. Um, 
In addition to that, we have half-termly tests, and you can see the dates uh, already. And I've got a little booklet here, as well as being on the website, so you, know, you can have uh, those dates to hand. First half term one, the information that we'll be testing on are the topics. When we come, though, to half term two, it is the pre-public exams. I like to call them mock exams, okay, because I think that probably perhaps uh, hits home with a, a couple of us. So these exams are a practice, but we want to make sure that students take them seriously. So we will be ensuring, okay, that students have uh, revision guides, revision sheets, a list of topics, so that again, okay, there's a real focus uh, on the outcome. In half term three, we will give students another opportunity. Perhaps not all three papers, perhaps only two. Again, the idea is to practice non-calculator topics and calculator topics. You might think, oh, half term four, a bit of a relax, but actually that's the time when we'll be looking at the data and making sure that we are revisiting anything that's not secure, okay? Anything that we feel needs improving. So hopefully then, by the time we're ready for the GCHC exams, students are entering those exams with a sense of confidence. Okay, moving on. Let's see. Um, homework or home learning, really, really uh, key. Students who work at home do much better in the exam. Okay, that is not uh, a statistic that I've made up. If you wish to look at facts, you will see that students who study for an hour each week can improve their performance on a couple of subjects, okay? So uh, there are figures for that. In maths, home learning is just absolutely terrific. We've moved from Hegarty, that you may have heard of, to Sparks. Sparks is absolutely fabulous, okay? I thought that Hegarty was great, but Sparks is even better. There are over 10,000 video clips to help you with any aspects of maths that your son or daughter uh, is stuck on. And actually, if you're interested in maths, it's equally helpful to you as parents. Um, you have to, with Sparks, get 100% of your answers correct, okay? It is designed specifically uh, to your child's ability. You have to get it right. It will not allow you to move on because understanding that fact is really, really important before you build on something else. We'd really encourage you to go onto the Sparks website uh, and have, have a look. Um, Maths homework is set on a Wednesday and is due in on a Wednesday. And that is for every single student at the Radcliffe School. So there's only one day to remember, Wednesday. Okay, that's when maths homework is set and that's when it needs to be completed by. And if a student says to you, oh, my teacher forgot to set me the homework. I would just like to say that that would be an untruth because the system is programmed to set homework every week, okay? It will never forget, okay? Unless we have some sort of blackout, it will never forget, okay? So please make sure that you set time aside for your son or daughter to do their homework. Uh, as we've heard, um, homework will get us somewhere, but revision is really, really important. So year 11s, I hate to tell you, okay, but weekends and holidays are not necessarily break times. You have to have revision happening. If you break it up into chunks and do a small amount each week rather than a huge amount, it is far more beneficial because it helps your brain to learn things in small amounts rather than digest a huge amount of information. So please start revision early, okay? Half an hour each week of maths, okay? You will see the results in your grades. Another opportunity that I'd like to point out to you is that the school is offering uh, English and maths tuition, okay? Free parents, okay? As a mother, I have spent lots of money on my children on tuition, 30 pounds per week, okay, on a particular subject. 
So we have given out letters, okay, to year 11 for free English and math, lasting 10 weeks. That would save you £300 if you were thinking of getting your own tuition. Please take up that opportunity, okay? That math tuition would be great. There are many, many, though, other websites, okay? Uh, Dr. Frost, Math Genie, on maths, loads of ways in which you can revise, as well as books. Again, we sell them on parent pay, but I'd really encourage uh, these websites because they're interactive, okay? They'll mark your work, give you other suggestions. So uh, please look out for those. Um, so I've already kind of talked a little bit about home learning and I, I won't go uh, into great detail, but please parents, make sure that your sons and daughters are revising anywhere apart from their bedrooms, okay? Because, okay, you cannot support them if they're up there, okay? They might fall asleep and you might think they're doing your homework, okay? So please find them a nice area where they can sit, they're comfortable, and you can perhaps give them lots of tea and coffee or drinks just to make sure, you know, that they are staying on task. Um, equipment. I always say uh, to my students that if you went to a doctor and they didn't have a stethoscope and they were asking to borrow yours, you'd be a bit worried. So it's the same reason. Please, please, please can all year 11 students come prepared. What we ask for is a scientific calculator. Uh, we use a Casio one in schools. So if you've got the same one as teachers, it makes it easier. We sell all equipment in school. We do not make a profit, okay? And I'm not planning to go on holiday with any proceeds from that. So please, can you buy uh, equipment? Or if they have, if your son or daughter is a bit forgetful and they leave it on the you know, uh, kitchen sink, please can just make sure it goes in their bag so they've got it all the time. We really need that. Um, if there's a problem uh, for any reason, please contact myself or the class teacher. Now, sometimes I hear parents say, oh, you know, I wasn't very good at maths. I wasn't very good at maths. I don't like maths. Please, can we try and have a positive mindset? Because if your student, if your son or daughter is listening to you, okay, and you're kind of saying, oh, I'm a bit afraid of math, I'm not very good at it, it doesn't give a positive mindset. So please, can I ask, okay? You know, maths is great, okay? Maths is positive, okay? We love maths, okay? And a little bit of chance about that, so that, you know, there's a real buzz about mathematics. Um, and I think that's my last slide, okay. Mr. Watson. Sorry, I've only got two and a half minutes left now, so I'll uh, I'll talk quickly. Um. I apologize, We're going to, I'm, some of my, uh, my feedback is going to be quite repetitive on things that you've already heard, but that, that sort of makes sense because we're all making the same decisions uh, in, the, in the same way. Um, we did a lot of the heavy lifting of the science curriculum in year 10. That means your children should be already quite confident with most of those key ideas that go on and lead on to further understanding. And in year 11, the majority of our time is actually going to be spent then taking those ideas and applying the work from year 10, taking it further, putting it together into different um, situations, different scenarios, covering different content, but then showing how it comes back to those scientific principles and scientific areas that they learn in year 10. Um, they will still get a full range of science. There's some biology when they're looking at ideas of evolution and ecology, habitats, chemistry with a wide range, actually, of, of uh, chemical ideas, uh, particularly things like the rates of reactions, which is a core topic on its own. Um, and then some physics with some waves and magnetism to, to finish off. All of this is based on prior learning. And one of the uh, ideas that is we've heard over and over again is the importance of starting your revision early. Um, there is absolutely no reason why students can't start revising immediately in science because all the work that they've done in year 10 is going to come back in the exams 
and it is going to form a foundation for year uh, 11. Um, in fact, I did my first revision session with my some, some year 11s this, uh, this evening because if we start now, um, as Mrs. Aidan Wallace said, we can do it in smaller chunks and spread it out over a whole year rather than cramming it in at the end. So I would advise you to, to get started early, and I'll talk about that in a, in a minute as well. Um, we cannot ignore the fact that obviously we are working towards one goal in year 11, and that is the GCSEs at the end of it. As with uh, our colleagues, we do informal assessments throughout the year. In most lessons, uh, there will be some element of feedback. Um, we do small tests ourselves, and they are for us to be able to track what the students know, what they don't know, and to allow us to then shape what we can do in the future to make sure that we help them in the areas. Sorry, I thought I had a question then. Um, to see what we, uh, you know, to shape their, um, what we teach them in the future and how we can help and support them the best. We have the PPEs in December, just like everybody else. I don't want to be overly competitive with maths and their three GCSE exams. Uh, we're doing four. Um, and that's because science is two full subjects. And that is what will cause the students problems when they're revising. Because what, the, what students quite naturally do is they say, right, on Monday I'll do maths, on Tuesday I'll do English, on Wednesday I'll do um, science, on Thursday I'll do French. There is far, far more content in the science. It's two full GCSEs. They need to put a lot of time aside for the science. And that is a, that is a lot of work. So again, please help them start early. Um, like, the, like maths, we are a tiered subject and that gives us a particular challenge because we have to make the decision about which tier it is that your, your child sits. And everybody wants to sit higher tier just because, and that's not always appropriate. So we have, we have a lot of data on our students by the time we get to um, December. We will pick the tiers there. In fact, they've already been do, doing tiered tests right the way through year um, 10 as well. We have a fairly simple rule. It, it's quite clear at the edges. It, it does get a little bit, um, you know, there's, there are some decisions to be made in, in the middle. But as a general rule, if you want to be doing the higher tier, you have to show us that you are regularly hitting grade fives in those assessments, whether it that be end of year tests but then particularly in those December PPEs. If you do not get grade fives in those, we do not think it's, it's appropriate for you to do the higher, higher tier. Now, having said that, we do have a second chance this year for students with a, a later set of PPEs, and we will allow students to you know, prove us wrong if that, if that makes sense. So we're not trying to, trying to cut people off, but we do have to make decisions sometimes which are not what students themselves would want. Um, the PPE data, as well as being used for, for the tiering, we also go through those papers uh, very, very carefully. Again, looking to identify areas of weakness um, that we can support the students. The curriculum is finished by about February. At that point, we start taking all the evidence that we've got for um, we, all the evidence we've got from the assessments going back to the beginning of year 10 and use that to guide what we do then in the, in the final months to help the students. Uh, learning, learning from home, I, I just want to talk very, very quickly about this. Um, we, we, like everybody else, will be setting it weekly. Um, I would agree with the comment that we had earlier, which because it's two subjects, really we should be setting two homeworks a week. Now, what we will do is we will formally set one homework a week, that will often be on Doddle. Um, Doddle is an online pl learning platform that science, only science uh, is subscribed to in the school. Um, there is an, another one called GCSE Pod that you might get as well. Every student has a login for Doddle. Um, if you don't know it, please email. If, you're, if, if your child is saying, I can't log on to Doddle, please just email their teacher and their teacher will email back with the password and the username, and that will fix that problem. Um, the reason we like using Doddle is because it's actually a really good revision tool as well. We do predominantly sort of treat it like a, a homework tool, but it's got a lot of lessons and a lot of support on there so that if 
uh, your child is trying to revise and they want some extra help and some support, they can log on to Doddle, they can find content on whatever it is that they're trying to revise. There are lessons on there. There are um, videos of, of experiments and, and such like. There are test, uh, questions that they can test themselves with and make sure that they understand it. And so the second homework a week that we expect the students to be doing is revision. That's, that's our sort of way of looking at it. So we'll set one homework and the second homework is for the student to do independent revision. Finally, um, I, I, I apologize if I'm, if I'm a little bit patronizing here. Oh, sorry, uh, just going back, we will find with the Doddle, as we move through year 11, we'll probably set less onto it and we will set more and more just standard exam questions, past exam questions, because that becomes more and more important um, as, we, as we go on through the year. Um, how, can, how can you support your, uh, your children? Well, you're here tonight. And, and I know how difficult that can be to find the time and the, you know, the, the space to, to do that. So thank you for that. Um, help, help, you know, if you, you know we've got Doddle, we've also got uh, another package which is across all subjects called GCSE Pod, which again, you can use to, to help your, your children. And it might mean an uncomfortable hour sort of sitting down trying to get, understand how the, how the systems work. And um, they are, fairly user-friendly, especially Doddle. We think Doddle's lovely. That's why we picked it, because it's so easy to, to use. Um, and so use that for, for practice, use that for help. We find that actually with science, just talking to your, your children and, and exploring those scientific ideas that are around us all the time is such a good way of bringing that knowledge out from your from children climate change, gas prices, these are all rooted in, in scientific issues and how we fix them. Um, and they're on the news constantly. And just engaging with your children and talking about that will, will make a, a huge difference. Um, if you do have any problems, um, you are always welcome to, to email me or email your class teacher directly. Um, and I think that's me about done. So thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you. Um, so that um, pretty much concludes things um, for this evening. Before we go, though, I just want to take the opportunity in the couple of minutes we've got left just to re-emphasise three just really important things that have been touched on uh, tonight by colleagues. First one is about attendance. Um, I spoke to Year 11 last week in an assembly, um, and what I explained to them is that even though May, next May, may seem a long time away, um, if we take away holidays, if we take away bank holidays, if we take away weekends, if we take away the days that they're actually going to be doing these PPE mock exams, there's only actually just over 120 normal teaching days left for year 11. Um, and as I said to them last week, 120 isn't a big number. So it's really, really crucial that you know, they attend every single day, that they you know, very much aim for 100% attendance, uh, you know, because... You know, as as is obvious, any learning that's lost, you know, could have a really detrimental if, uh, impact. So please encourage your child uh, to attend 100%. Just to again to go over what colleagues have said about home learning, please encourage them to get into good habits. Set up somewhere in the house where they can work. And I know this might seem like a horrific concept for them, but they will need to put their phone to one side while they're doing the work. Break it into you know hour chunks. But as we've said, if they can get into good habits now, just do one or two hours a night, that can have a massive impact in the long term in terms of the grades that they get. And research shows very clearly students can improve several grades if they get into good habits and stick to them during year 11. And the third thing is about communication. Um, as colleagues have said, if you've got subject specific questions, please email um, the, your child's teacher or the head of faculty. But we also know that it's a stressful time for students. You know, it's very likely that at some point between now and May, they'll have some kind of a wobble. They'll, you know, have some kind of stress, anxiety, where, you know, they'll feel it's a little bit overwhelming. So we want to do what we can to support that as well. So if your child is having any issues, you know, related to that, please let us know. Contact uh, your child's PLG, 
Mr. Mia, Mr. Havercroft, Miss Black, who I apologise, I forgot to introduce earlier as well, is also part of the Year 11 pastoral team. So there's lots of support that we can give in school. We don't want children to, you know, to suffer in silence. Let us know and then we'll do what we can uh, to help them because it is a tough journey. But, you know, if we all work together, then we can make sure your child makes it to the end successfully. Um, so just to wrap up, thank you once again for coming this evening. It's great to see you. It does show that you really care. You're really invested uh, in your child's education. If you do have any questions, uh, we're happy to stay for a few moments to answer them. But otherwise, have a good evening. Thank you very much.